Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Q, covering Red Hat Summit 2017, brought to you by Red Hat. Brian, good to see you again. Thanks for being, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I said good to see you again. We thought we had you on before, but maybe not, but anyway, hope, hopefully you will. Had lots uh, of rackers in yeah, the last, yeah, yeah, I, I did the We mix. feel like, you know, rack space is uh, we are one, of, one of ours with uh, Cube alum, but so, Red Hat Summit, obviously a big show for the industry, big show for Rackspace, but your focus is on OpenStack, you're the general manager of the OpenStack business. You guys started OpenStack, I mean you and some others, but it was really the seed and the vision of, of Rackspace. So, Bring us up to date as to where you are now. Yeah. Stack uh, to your point, it, it kind of goes back to 2010 where Rackspace and NASA essentially co-invented OpenStack and um, uh, opened it up as a community project and, and made it open source. Again, the intent was how do you help leverage the innovation of a community to help build cloud infrastructure? How do we, uh, for at that time it was really focused on public and private cloud. Um, Rackspace over the years, certainly our, pri our public cloud was built on OpenStack and we continue to do a lot of that focus in upstream innovation and contributing and how do you make this platform scale very massively. Um, over the last several years, where we've seen great adoption of OpenStack specifically though, is in private cloud solutions. Um, so we have built a practice over the last several years, building, deploying, and operating private clouds for customers in our data centers, in their data centers, third party data centers, and that's where we've seen a lot of growth in that. Yeah, Brian, I uh, wonder if you can help us unpack that a little bit. I, I know you and I sure. are going to be back here in Boston, oh, down the road at the Heinz for OpenStack Summit next week, but when you hear kind of the general discussion, OpenStack has changed a lot in yeah. the last few years, so there are people that throw stones and are like, oh, well, it's done, it's over, sounds like you've got a good, robust business. Tell us, where are people using it, how are they using it, what is it kind of replacing or helping them sure. grow their businesses? Yeah, yeah. Uh, OpenStack itself, if you think of this arc of an open source project and the rapid innovation, how quickly it's matured. Over the last couple years, um, OpenStack itself has really become a solid platform, infrastructure as a service. Um, in fact, I think I heard a comment as of like the Barcelona Summit where an analyst or media or somebody said, OpenStack is now boring. Um, because a lot of the drama or uh, rapid change has, has really come out of it, um, many of the core projects have very much matured. Um, you do hear, is OpenStack dead? Are people going straight to containers on bare metal? Um, is this the, the end of this space? In practice, we are seeing it is still how am I consuming or building cloud native apps, I'm consuming cloud services, and certainly in a private cloud context, I'm looking for that power and agility that I see from a public cloud, but delivered in a private cloud form factor, and we're still seeing huge adoption for OpenStack in that use case. Well, and there's a lot of misconceptions about OpenStack over the years, and that part of it, it was just sort of put out there and said, okay, let's see what happens, but I remember when, when it went public, uh, John Furrier, other co-host of theCUBE, called it the a Hail Mary against Amazon. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, in, in a way, people needed some kind of alternative, um, and it's really emerged as the only, correct me if I'm wrong, but really the only open platform to build private clouds on. Yeah. You know, and, and when, you, when you say you hear, oh, it was OpenStack dead, you hear that from a lot of the legacy enterprise companies who were sort of doing their own proprietary, you know, uh, private cloud. So, to, to your point, it's become a platform, you know, with momentum. Um, yeah. Further thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think uh, to your point, the, those that are really saying it, it's dead and they're doing their own proprietary cloud, that's really just virtualization at scale. They're not really consuming cloud services in the same framework that OpenStack delivers it. Um, so it, it is uh, still a, a, a vibrant and growing platform. Um, we're seeing it as the platform of choice for not just how do I move virtualized workloads, but even for containers and other orchestrated solutions on top of that as well. Um, so it really is this underpinning technology that people are consuming for private and hybrid types of scenarios. And, and, and Red Hat would argue, I wonder if you could weigh in on this, that it, in order for you to, do, to build a true hybrid cloud, we use the term true private cloud, we can extend that to true hybrid cloud, you've got to have a sort of modern infrastructure that's open on-prem, or else you're going to be just sort of force-fitting, you know, s square pegs and round yeah. holes. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of validity to that, especially when you think about the concept of portability or, or leveraging, uh, moving applications between different platforms. 
if I have a truly siloed infrastructure, I don't have that capability. Um, whereas if you look at leveraging these open platforms of uh, open stack and, and uh, the, the tooling that I can use on top of that, cloud forms and, and other services, right. and certainly as I move into PaaS and containers, I now have much more portability on where I can deploy and operate these different technologies. All right, so Brian, congratulations. You guys are an innovation award winner. Can you talk a little bit about you know, the solutions and what, what you guys are working closely with Red Hat to deliver yeah. to your customers? Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. So um, we were uh, awarded the um, one of their Innovator of the Year awards for cloud infrastructure. And the way this came about is Rackspace and Red Hat have a mutual customer um, that really came to us where they were looking for a private cloud delivered as a service. They're, they're looking for the operational expertise that Rackspace brings in operating these technologies at scale, but we're looking for a fully certified Red Hat stack. Um, and at that time, we didn't have an offering around uh, the Red Hat OpenStack platform. We obviously have a long-standing relationship with Red Hat and uh, support a, a number of Red Hat technologies across our businesses. But in the OpenStack space, we had not productized or brought to market a managed service around the Red Hat OSP platform. And so we partnered very closely with them to bring this solution to market. But it's not as simple as just saying, voila, now we have our Red Hat offering. Um, our focus is really to bring the operator's perspective to it. So we spent 18 months in total, if you think about from when we really kicked off this effort with them, deploying and operating and scaling and testing and going through all the stages of patching and upgrading and uh, running different workload profiles and, and really scalability testing and feeding back a lot of innovation into the Red Hat team. Um, it led to a number of enhancements that have come in later releases of RHEL OSP, uh, which allowed us to really get to a platform that we could stand behind, provide as a managed service and deliver a 4.9's availability SLA around it. And so this is the offering that we brought together. We're being recognized for some of those innovations that we fed back into it. Um, we consume their uh, uh, distributed continuous integration environment. So we, through the DCI platform, we execute over 1,500 tests on a daily basis, which allows us to deliver the latest release of RHEL OSP to our customers within two weeks of a given major release. Um, we made a number of uh, networking opinionated enhancements and uh, how can we break out load balancing from the control plane. Things allow us to deploy and operate these solutions at a much larger scale. Yeah. Maybe if you could speak to, you know, one of the challenges we've heard for OpenStack for years is it's kind of complicated and how do we do this? And I have to think kind of the Red Hat service and support model partnered with the fanatical support yeah. uh, for, from Rackspace, uh, you know, should be uh, able to address uh, some of those concerns for customers. Yeah, that, that's honestly, um, that's where I think we've found the most success with customers is OpenStack itself is a very powerful tool, um, but it is complex. It's not something that you're just going to download and run on a VM in your laptop to gain experience with it. Built by rocket scientists, what do you expect? <laughs> literally, quite literally. So the complexity does continue to be a barrier to adoption for many enterprises. Um, that's where our focus of being the operators and delivering it as a service um, has been uh, so key for many customers. And then getting that fully compliant or certified stack from Red Hat, um, the software assurance that comes with that um, has been a great fit to allow customers to really grow. You mentioned uh, platform as a service. Stu, earlier you, like, you made the comment of you know, the platform formerly known as PaaS. There's a lot of discussion about PaaS. Well, it's really not here anymore. Can you guys at least start with Brian? Maybe Stu, you can chime in. What's happening with PaaS? Is it getting subsumed? I often say uh, you know, infrastructure as a service plus or SaaS minus. Yeah. What's happening with PaaS? Because when you talk to companies like Oracle, it's like, oh, our PaaS business is rocking. You know, so what's really happening out there? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure you have thoughts on this too. Um, I, I believe that PaaS is still a very strong play, and that's where many organizations, now they're embracing cloud and cloud native development, are looking to move up the step and leverage more fabric-like services, things that a PaaS can provide them, that integrated development environment, how do I make it easy to consume different data services, uh, removing the coarse grain building blocks that I would otherwise have to orchestrate or manage myself. So we do see um, a lot of adoption for that. It's kind of that progression. As I'm moving up, I'm moving into cloud native designs and architectures. Now I'm looking to really empower and enable my developers to consume these fabric services, moving up the stack. Yeah, and co comment I'll make on it is, if you look at what's happening with the container space, you heard about what Red Hat talked as to how they, they take that piece, it's still, I want to be able to take my application, have how I built that, and have some flexibility as to where that lives. And that was yeah. one of the core values uh, uh, of what passed 
has was going to offer because right, if I want to do, you know, Red Hat is the example with OpenShift, I want to do it on premises, I want to do it in AWS, I want to do it, you know, with Google, uh, I have that flexibility. Uh, maybe we're just not calling it PaaS anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's, that's good. I, I think if you look at the move to containerization, there are still those other components or services that I need to consume, right? How am I solving for identity and networking and storage and all these other components that go into it and this is where some of the PaaS frameworks can help that. Yeah. We I, ahead, just uh, one piece, Rackspace has a really interesting kind of portfolio of services. Yeah. You're partnering with all the big cloud guys, you've got private cloud. What do your customers think when you kind of say hybrid cloud or multi-cloud? How does that fit into kind of where they are today and where they're making their strategy uh, for cloud going forward? Yeah, it's, um, Again, Rackspace does represent a very large portfolio. We are the managed cloud company. I obviously am very focused on our private cloud and OpenStack, but we have as practices, uh, we help enable customers to either migrate to, deploy, or operate on Amazon Web Services. Uh, certainly the Azure platform, and recently we announced Google Compute um, providing support for that. We have customers that are coming to us looking for help in architecting or moving to these, but the reality is, is almost all customers, and they touched on that during the keynote here, we live in a multi-vendor strategy or multi-cloud strategy. Um, certain clouds, either geographically or feature set wise, are better suited for certain applications or workloads. And so many of our customers are living in that hybrid cloud world where I'm uh, leveraging multiple different platforms depending on workload placement or other rules to that. Um, where Rackspace has really stepped in is, is providing that cloud expertise and helping them leverage that, providing tooling to help them deploy and, and operate in these different environments. Um, in some cases where it's portability, literally, literally move the same application around, but oftentimes it's really workload placement and how do I more effectively use it. We were talking in our open about you know, the bromide from Mark Andreessen and software is eating the world, and the implication, and, and tying that into Benioff's statement that there'll be more SaaS companies coming out of non-tech companies than tech companies. You're seeing some big SaaS tech companies like a Workday and you know, Salesforce, and, and Infor has always been there, moving to the Amazon cloud, and others who are maybe saying, well, I'm not sure I want to move to the Amazon cloud. So my specific question is, relative to SaaS take up on things like OpenStack, what yeah. are you seeing there? Yeah, ironically, certainly in private cloud, that's probably one of our, our biggest areas of yeah. growth is uh, companies that are launching SaaS platforms for all the same reasons that they would be using an AWS to back that, right? They have the agility and, and rapid growth and elasticity that they can build into it, but they're running their platform and depending on um, you know, uh, HR, you, you mentioned Workday, uh, we have another uh, great example, Ultimate Software. Yeah, sure. Uh, they run their platform, again, it's HR management and other services services, they want to run in a private cloud context, but deploying that framework where they can leverage cloud native deployment, OpenStack has been a great fit for that and help them grow and scale. Okay, so um, what's next for you guys um, in your world of, yeah. of OpenStack? What can you, can you give us a little roadmap and what, what we should expect? Sure, for us, um, very specifically, if, if you focus on the IaaS layer, um, we continue to be very focused on operational efficiencies. How are we helping customers get the right unit economics out of a private cloud? So getting to greater densities, higher performance, more optimal usage of their cloud um, as we bring more visibility to um, actual capacity planning and capacity management and how are they make sure they're really leveraging or growing their cloud as they can. And then certainly from a feature set where we continue to move up and adopt uh, these other services. I know we touched on earlier on the PaaS. Um, this is an area where we're starting to get a lot of customer demand saying, can you help us in this area? Are there things that you could be doing going straight to native Kubernetes or looking at the different PaaS frameworks like OpenShift or uh, Cloud Foundry? These are areas that we're starting to work more and more to potentially bring services to help customers really leverage these platforms. And Paul Cormier was talking about how, you know, early days of the cloud, everybody thought, you know, everything was going to Amazon and so forth. But everything is going to the cloud, whether it's a private cloud or a public cloud. I mean, it, I know somebody told me the other day they're running an application on VMS. Okay, so some stuff never, never dies. Uh, but generally, the world will be cloud. Maybe we'll stop using the words like cloud and digital. Well, a camera, it's not a digital camera, but yeah. your thoughts on that? I mean, is that yeah, I, I, no, I think you're spot on. I mean, there's a long tail, right? Like there's still a lot of AS400 out there and, yeah. and things that are, uh, although with open power, maybe you could make the argument it's coming to OpenStack anyway. Yeah. Um, it, right. it is, if you think about any greenfield development is all being done in cloud native ways. If you look at um, folks coming out of school and, and new application development, 
nobody's developing in the context of bare metal or um, legacy client server apps that are kind of built in that framework. Um, I think even as enterprises continue to re-platform services, they're moving into that cloud way so that they can take the long-term benefits of Agility and, and cost savings that they're looking for. Um, so it will become ubiquitous. You're right, at some point, we're going to stop calling it cloud. It's just, it's the way you're consuming yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. So, Brian, final question I have for you. A piece that I hadn't heard enough about when it comes to OpenStack is that kind of application modernization and replatforming. Yeah. How, does, how does OpenStack fit into that discussion with your customers? You know, I, I'm worried, we talked in the keynote this morning about it. It's like, oh, okay, we're going to do new stuff, but we might move the old stuff. Yeah. We're not just moving the old stuff and leaving it, right? You know? Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. If you think of enterprises that are adopting or going all in on OpenStack, they have, if you go back to the pets versus cattle analogy, everybody sure. knows, they have lots of pets that they need to care for. Yeah. Um, so we've looked at, and, and we've actually worked very hard with many customers on how do I leverage things like Ceph as to back Nova and, and help bring things like live migration and other services that help OpenStack still cater to those pets and not force them in a full cloud native model. How can I still deliver some amount of resiliency and, and failover in the infrastructure so that the app doesn't have to be aware of it? And that way they can have one environment to run both new cloud development, but also still care for those legacy apps. Excellent. Ryan, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great Thank to you have guys. you. And uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest at theCUBE. We're live from Red Hat Summit in Boston. Right back. <laughs>